Welcome to Sisters in Laws TV. I'm your host, Erica and McAfee. In October is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month, a month dedicated to honoring and remembering our babies who have gone to heaven far too soon. I'm excited to present to you a series on surviving pregnancy loss. I know many of the stories you may hear may be triggering, so press pause, take a break, and come back to hear these powerful stories from sisters in loss who have survived pregnancy loss. So welcome to the Surviving Pregnancy Loss series. I'm your host, Erica and McAfee, and I'm excited to introduce to you all today's guest, Jodian. So Jodian, I would love for you to share a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure. So again, my name is Jodi Ann, um, but I go by Jodi. It's a lot easier just that way. And I currently work nonprofit. I am a program assistant for um, a family and children's agency. And what we do is pretty much we are a social rehabilitation uh, type of program for homeless adults. That's kind of my career right now. Nice, nice. So take us back on your journey to motherhood and share with us your love story. Okay, so my loss started, well, it happened back in 2013. Um, my husband, we, my, we got married on the island, and when my husband came here, um, you know, I haven't seen him in a while, things happen, and um, to my surprise, I, I ended up getting pregnant. Um, I wasn't supposed to have been pregnant because, like, my period was supposed to start, like, literally um, the day after he arrived. So I wasn't really worried about it. Um, so it never came. I guess I was kind of moody and, um, my sisters were like, what's wrong with you? You're being kind of short with him. Are you pregnant? And I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, I don't know what's wrong with you guys. I think my cycle's just changing. It's a little off, but you know, kind of nothing's happening. Um, then I had a lady from my church come to me and tell me that you're pregnant. And I'm like, lady, you're bugging. I don't know what you and Jesus is talking about, but it's not right. I'm not pregnant. My mom came and said the same thing. And I'm like, okay. But my mom normally says things. She's normally pretty on point. So finally I went and I took a test and it came back positive and I was excited. You know, I was like, okay, cool. This is, this is great stuff. Um, we were kind of trucking along in the pregnancy and nothing was kind of happening. And then one day I went to the bathroom. I was kind of spotting. It was kind of, it was bad. Um, so I ended up going into the ED and uh, moments later, I ended up passing the fetus in the toilet at 12 weeks. And um, yeah, I'm just kind of thinking about it now and just kind of how it all went down. I was just like, it was, yeah, that was just the craziest thing ever. And um, it was really sad, very emotionally sad. And I was just like, whoa, um, what's wrong with me? Um, everything was going well and you know they say you know once you get past that 12 week mark you know you're supposed to be okay and that just kind of wasn't my story um so that was with that loss uh, i lost that pregnancy at 12 weeks um a year later we got pregnant again and you know i was nervous we were doing okay um i got past the 12 week mark and i was like, okay this feels good and then literally at around um, almost 18 weeks, my water broke and I ended up going into the hospital. Uh, they did an examination and they were like, you know, we're seeing membranes. We don't think that this pregnancy is going to last any longer. And um, a day or two later, I was in the labor and delivery room. They induced me and I ended up having my son who I call Bryce. And then after that, we had one more loss a year after that. And um, I went in for a nine week checkup and there was no heartbeat. And that baby um, ended up passing due to trisomy 13 um, was that pregnancy. And um, at that point in time in life, I was like, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> this is like three times the bat. I'm like, I don't think I want to you know, be hurt again. And it took a toll on me. I didn't think it would um, as much as it did, but it did. 
And so um, we kind of just, my husband and I just kind of gave it a break after that until um, on Faithful Day, uh, like the end of, uh, beginning of um, 2017 in January, I took a test and I found that we were pregnant again. And I was excited, but nervous. My husband was a wreck. He was not on, you know, with the pregnancy literally until he saw her. So that was kind of a battle on its own where I was kind of doing this thing on my own because he was like, I can't get attached. You know, you've had three losses. I don't know if this is going to, you know, this baby's going to come to fruition. And um, September 16th, 2017 at 1229 AM, my daughter, bless this world, Keelan, and um, she's a firecracker, but Lord knows that's my, my sweetheart and she's here now. Man, you went through a journey. <laughs> oh my goodness. From loss to loss to loss, back to back to back to, you know, giving up and then God blessing you with this unexpected blessing. And then for you to go throughout that pregnancy, I'm sure it was filled with like anxiety and worry and fears and just frustration and just really unknowing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot. I remember. Um, and then, so it was just for me, it was four years of loss. So 2013, the first loss, 2014, a loss, 2015, a loss. I lost my dad in 2016. So, which is a constant, continuous loss, 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 loss. But then I guess they say that um, normally in, 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 in grief or, you know, loss, there's happiness because literally my dad died in 2016 and then months, a couple months later, in the next year, my daughter came about. So in the grief, you know, and there's beauty in the brokenness, right? There was grief and sadness. And then my daughter came and brought about just a sense of happiness into everyone's, into everyone's life. Amen. And that's a testimony to a lot of the mothers who are waiting or who have gone through losses and um, may be taking a break. You know, God may bless you during that time of waiting, like literally where you're you're taking a break from trying to conceive. And, you know, that's when that unexpected blessing may come. So how are you doing during this virus? I mean, we've been in this this pandemic quarantine ish i'll say now, <laughs> because of the summertime for the last six months so how are you doing how has it affected your grief how are you, how's your family doing during COVID 19. we're blessed thank god anyone connected to me has been fine um no one's gotten sick and i don't take that lightly um definitely believe that there's just definitely some good coverage on our lives and you know we we thank god for that definitely we've been okay there's days um when i'm just like i'm bored <laughs> i'm like this this can't be it <laughs> i'm like i can't like i want to go outside mind you know i'm kind of a homebody anyway so it's okay it was okay well, i'm like oh okay i don't have to do this but i think what the virus did was it harbored me from going out when i wanted to you know so it was just like oh man i can't do anything but it's been good. I think with my, um, to be honest, I really haven't um, focused on any of the losses a lot this year, just because I've been dealing with my daughter, um, you know, because she was out of daycare and just home with me and giving me a run for my money. <laughs> so, and I was just like, oh man. Um, so, but it's it's been rough in its own. And then, you know, it's hard for her. She wanted to be outside and go to the parks and the playgrounds and we couldn't do that. They literally, you know, had caution tape around our playground and we couldn't go outside. And so it's like, okay, let's go for a walk around the neighborhood. So we got really familiar with the neighborhood, you know, because that's kind of all we could do. Um, you know, she's two, almost three, keeping that mask on. That was a whole other thing where she's just like, this is mom, mm -mm, this is not working for me. You know, she didn't want to do that. But, um, it, I, the, you know, it was good. It would give me some time to be by myself. You know, my husband had to still work. Um, eventually the daycare, the preschool opened back up so my daughter was able to go back to school um, and just kind of have some me time, which is something that I haven't had in a while. You know, so it was, it's been, it's been a blessing. There's been definitely some, some good points in this whole pandemic era, era definitely. Yes, understand that. So, um, how during October, which is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month, 
we honor our babies who have gone to heaven far too soon. So what do you do to memorialize or remember your babies? You know, does your daughter know that she has um, brother and sisters in heaven? Um, how does that process work for you in your family? I, we haven't told her anything yet. Um, family members have made mention of, you know, other siblings around her, but you know, she doesn't really pay that much attention. Um, so I know what we did last year, um, you know, the pregnant, the colors are that pink and blue. So we have a nice big tree in my backyard and, you know, we wrapped ribbon around the tree. Um, we did a balloon release at one point in time. Um, I physically have them tattooed on me. I literally have, um, there's a, I have a bow, which is representative of my, of my daughter. That first pregnancy loss was a girl. I have a bow for her and then in the bow, I have my son's footprints in the bow. And then for the last pregnancy, I have a butterfly and she's kind of, you know, on over, kind of overlooking the two of them because she was the last one. So I did, you know, I did more of the permanent type of memorializing for them. And so that's kind of how I remember them. Um, the months that I, you know, I lost them. I had a loss in April, a loss in September and a loss in November. So I've kind of, you know, around those times, I do think about them and get a little, you know, a little sad just to kind of think, you know, what would have been if you guys would have been here and, you know, now you're, you know, you have a little sister here too at this point in time, just kind of thinking about what life would be like if they were all here. I have a few more gray hairs, I'm sure, but um, I'm sure it would have been an awesome ride. Yes, I love that. I love that you have tattoos. I always am curious of people who do put to do put um, tattoos on their body for their babies. What do they look like? And I've seen some amazing tattoos um, in the Sisters and Lost community. A lot of people do post their tattoos there. So. Yes, I've seen them. Yep. I've added mine to it too. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. So it always gives me ideas because I, I do eventually want to get a tattoo with my losses as well. Um, and I always love the tattoos. They just make me so proud. I mean, cause it's a, I mean, you're physically walking around with it every day, right? Yeah, every day. Absolutely. You know, a necklace or some other type of memorial that you have on you, but it's definitely, you can, you can look at yourself and say, Hey, you know, these are, this is my way of thinking of them. Um, you know, having them close to me and just honoring them in that way. So I love that. Um, the tattoos and doing the balloon releases and, um, Something that um, another um, sister-in-law done with their child was like put up like make make almost like a um, I don't know not not necessarily an altar but actually have pictures of like the ultrasounds of the losses and um, kind of point to them with their two or three year old and say you know this is your baby your big brother your big sister or something. Um, in heaven. And there's a lot of books that are out there too that can help you when you're ready to have that conversation with your with your daughter as she gets older and really understands, you know, the concept of death. But I think that um, being able to have her be incorporated in it as well um, just makes for a more rich family because, you know, without them, she wouldn't be here, you know, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so true. My daughter, my niece makes a point. My daughter has like, she's like five tone. She's like, she's not, her body's very, like her face is light and then she's darker tones all over her body. And so my niece always says that um, her skin colors, her tones, I should say, are she's carrying her siblings with her. Huh? And I was just like, okay, I, I, I didn't think about it that way, but absolutely. I love that, that she's so so tried the so different. I'm like, girl, I can make you know your arms are this color, your legs are this color, your face is this color. Literally, she has so many different colors to her. And I'm just like that. I, I like that. So she's like she has a little bit of every all of them with her, you know, tone wise. Nice. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So, how are you surviving pregnancy loss? Oh, prayer. <laughs> Lord knows it. Um. When I, we had the, the first miscarriage, um, you know, it happened on a Friday and I remember reaching out to my first lady and, um, you know, just kind of talking with her and my mom and, you know, I just kind of, you know, who, the, the invite who I did tell and I called to say, hey, you know, we lost the baby. Just, you know, definitely held me up with prayer. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to church. It just happened on Friday. I'm home on, on you know, Saturday happened. I'm like, I'm going, I'm got up and I, 
got dressed, went to church Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Why did I do that? I, I didn't make it through the sermon. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I was just like, I'm sitting there and I'm just like, whew. I, I'm like just crying. And it's not, the, it wasn't the move of God at the time. I was just literally broken. I'm like, why am I here? Like, I just had this whole loss two days ago. You know, why did I decide to come here? But it was like, for me at the time, I just needed to be there. And I remember I got up and I went to the car. My mom ended up, you know, minutes later came over to say, you know, like, you know, you're stronger than this. You need to just, you know, come on. And the, later on, my first lady found me and she just literally wrapped her arms around me and I just sobbed. And I was just like, oh, I think I just need that, you know, that kind of tear therapy where I can cry it out and just go and just prayed for me. And it was just literally, it was prayer because God knows at the point I was like, you know, I don't want to do this again. I can't do this again. Like, what's wrong with me? Um, you know, my, my siblings all have children. They're fine. You know, why am I the one that these losses are happening to? You know, so definitely out of questioning God. <laughs> why, why me? What did I do to deserve this? What, what's going on? Why is my body failing me? Like, you just questions upon questions, you know, and then, um, but then, like, you know, we, I was just, my faith and praying and just like, you know, God, this can't be it, you know, and then you hear of other women, so I, like, I had three losses, but there's women who had seven losses and 10 losses, and they keep on going, and I go, you got that Job faith, because, <laughs> oh no, am I going to be able to do that, like, <laughs> like, that's rough. I was ready to white flag it and throw it in at th- after three, you know? And um, I guess they, they say, what's for you is what God has for you is for you, no matter how many times it happens, it happens. But I was just like, goodness, grief. So literally just, just praying and, you know, standing firm in my faith and, you know, um, having a praying mom who always prays for me, continues to pray for me, still prays for me. You know, and I was always just kind of being there and having a good family support system is definitely got me through it all. Hey, man, she said that they must have that Joe faith. No, you have that Joe faith <laughs> for you to keep trying. I know, right? <laughs> and I think that that is that's just a testament to just um, how how much prayer works, right? You know, even Absolutely. when you didn't feel like praying for yourself, you know, you had your mom and your family members and your friends yeah. rallying around you and praying for you um, so that you would get the courage enough to try again. So for those of you who are watching or listening, you know, it, you don't, it doesn't necessarily need, mean that you have to go through three losses or 10 losses you know, having the faith and the resilience to keep trying is really truly stepping out on faith and allowing God to work in your life, no matter what the outcome is going to be, because we, you know, you still can get pregnant again, right? And that may be tough for you, but you may still not come home with a baby, you know, it just, it, it, you really have to have faith in every step of the journey and you have to surrender to God and say, God, you know, I'm opening my arms to you and saying, you know, have your way truly. So no, you have that faith. <laughs> that faith. There was times when it was rocky. I was just like, Lord, this is, this is madness. Like, I don't know. But no, that's so true. And thank you for even just reiterating that. So just to hear that, it was just like, is it going to happen? You know, am I going to be a mom? Oh, you know, that, that was like my, my, my dream in life. I always wanted to be a mother. I love, love kids, love working with them and, you know, Will I ever be a mom? And so that was just kind of the question. And then I, you have the people who are saying, you know, after the first loss, oh, oh well, have you considered adopting? Oh, you know, there's, you, there's, there's a lot of other children that need love. Mind you now, they all have their own biological children. Right. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, I understand. I'm aware that there's, I can adopt, I can foster, I can do all that great stuff, but I would still love my own one that I birthed, you know, and, um, and I remember, I think someone was just like, oh, you know, like, oh, it, you'll, you'll, you'll be okay. How dare you tell me about my feelings, <laughs> and how I'm going to be, and how I'm going to feel, you know, and you don't know that, 
And then Brad's like, oh, you'll be okay. You'll be all right. Brush it off. And I'm like, no. I literally had to find strength in people who just understood and wanted to try to understand. Because I always say to people now, if you never experience a loss, you will never truly understand how I feel or how I felt. Because you've never been there. You got pregnant. Once you're nine months, your baby's here. No problems. Like with when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, literally, I did like eight weeks in the hospital on bed rest. And so I even remember my, as I got further along, my nurse said, you make sure you don't tell her any of these stories. I said, nope, she's going to hear it all the time. Do you know what I had to do to get you here? I said, no, no you're going to hear it all, you know? Yeah. I'm like, no, it was, trust me, it was not an easy road. And um, <laughs> Lord knows I was on bed rest. I couldn't, I literally could not do anything. When I finally said to my doctor, I said, listen, they're going to commit me into South One if you don't get me out of this hospital. I'm over being in here, you know? And he goes, if you can promise me that you can go home and do the same thing. I said, I will lay in my own bed. I just want to be comfortable just to get this, you know, she, she was fine. I got to 30 weeks. He goes, give me five more weeks. Got to 35 weeks. He goes, give me two more weeks. Got to my 38 weeks. He goes, girl, you can do whatever you want to now. I said, thank you. Oh my goodness, great. <laughs> you know? It was like a literal, like, you know, my, my, my anniversary happened. He goes, you can go to dinner and I want you back home after. He's like, don't stand up. If you're awake, you sit down. Just trying to, just to make sure that I'm okay. And thank God for my OB, great guy, great office staff. They were awesome. Um, that they, they definitely were, you know, tr tr rallying with me, you know, as much as I wanted the baby, they wanted me to have a baby too. And they were definitely there. And he, um, after the first loss, um, I ended up with well, the second loss. I ended up changing OBs because when I ended up in the hospital um, after I lost my second, my my son, you know, she had no decorum to her. Just no, my my she very just you know when people kind of distance themselves from their work, they just do what they do and that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And um, that was my OB at the time. She was just like she she walked into the hospital room, ignored my family sitting over there, and just beeline to the bed and spoke to me and walked out. My family was like, no, she has to go. <laughs> my mom was like, nope, find somebody different. And then when I found my new OB who I'm, you know, with now, it was just a total difference, just his bedside manner. And I, I would say to the community, like, as women, we really have to advocate for ourselves. You know, um, he, if I didn't feel good, if I didn't feel her moving for the day or an hour or two, like, any concern that I had, he never felt, I never felt I was a burden to him. I called him, the staff, whoever. He goes, go ahead, come into the office or go into the ER, the ER and I'll meet you there or whatever the case may be. And I just made sure that I always spoke up for myself. Like, you know what? I didn't get this far in this pregnancy or something to happen. I need for you guys to listen to how I'm feeling or whatever the case may be. And the staff definitely did that. And then, you know, finding you online. I was a part of a, um, this thing, this Connecticut based where I'm at called, um, it was called the High IGF Fund, but now they go after hope after loss. I went to meetings with them. I met a lot of other mothers and just kind of, I drew, I drew a lot of strength from that community, uh, community um, where they literally, you think that it's lost, it's hard losing a child at, you know, how many weeks old, but when somebody literally goes into labor and the baby's stillborn, that's a whole different level. <laughs> a whole different level, you know, carrying a baby nine months and then not being able to bring them home when the nursery's done and baby showers have been had and things are going on. And so um, I would say, you know, find programs, find other people in the community that have gone through the same thing. Because I always felt like, I, I knew people had miscarriages, you know, I knew it happened, but I never knew there was a community of people out there that had this thing. And so it was nice to find, connect the people who knew what you were going through. Amazing. Yes, it is. And I'm so thankful for sisters in laws to connect us and just give us both a sense of the community as we navigate, you know, what pregnancy or what really what parenting after loss looks like now. Um, so Jody, and where can we connect with you after this episode and this um, video goes live? Oh, yeah. So you guys can find me on Instagram. I am Miss MRS underscore. Wesley, W-E-S-L-E-Y, 2012. 
on Instagram, and I am Jody and Wesley on Facebook. And you can always just look me up also in the Sisters in Lost group because I'm there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your <laughs> thank story you. and your light with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. You as well. Have a wonderful one. All right.